Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Chase. And I'm Joby. And this is The Overrun. On today's episode of The Overrun, we are going to be reviewing the BMW 760i xDrive, which is a part of the greater 7 Series lineup from BMW, which has been their flagship sedan for a number of years now. And uh, all new for 2023 is a fully electric version of the 7 Series, the BMW i7. But for today's video, we're going to be reviewing the twin turbo V8 version, along with all of its very luxurious interior and exterior components. And we cannot wait to share all of those with you on today's video. Now, powering this 760i is noticeably not a big lump of battery. Instead, it's a big lump of 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 assisted by a sort of mild hybrid system. Now, that doesn't add a ton of power. It's, uh, I think, less than 50 horsepower, but the big news is that it produces 136 pounds-feet of torque, which BMW utilizes with a very cool boost feature we'll talk about more during the driving impressions. Uh, it also makes 536 horsepower total and 553 pounds-feet of torque, which is quite a lot for the segment. It's about on par with the Mercedes S-Class, and it is mated to BMW BMW's xDrive all-wheel drive system with an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now let's talk styling. Obviously that's part of the uh, slew of updates for the new generation of 7 Series. It's been updated with BMW's latest and ugliest design language, but I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I uh, I love and hate the design. Uh, for one, I absolutely hate the front end, as most people do, because it's a part of BMW's, like Chase just said, very ugly design language. The active front grills are cool, um, that they open and close, but I think it's really bad design and I just don't think it looks I very noticed good. when we were shooting b-roll the little active vent things here have yeah. this like uh, almost like you know haunted mansion the eyes follow you in the <laughs> painting effect you can't actually see that they're open from dead on it's kind of cool to walk by the car but I don't think that really makes up for it no no absolutely not but overall though I love this paint. It is twelve thousand dollars, so it's it ridiculous. should be should be really nice. But I love the two tone design or the paint on this specific spec. The car is substantial and it feels ginormous because it is ginormous. But um, it it's like a mob boss car. Uh, I uh, quickly on paint. Yeah, it's twelve thousand um, dollars. Thomas and James at Throttle House pointed this out. Ours has it too. This paint has got really, really bad orange peel. Mm -hmm. It looks like someone dried it with a blow dryer. Yeah, um, or a heat gun. I think it. I think the two-tone is awesome, Yeah. but I don't think that the paintwork itself is worthy of $12,000. No, and yeah, no. I'm I, with you on the, what did they use? Monolithic stance of it, right? Yeah. That's what the press kit says. Yeah, the stance, the stance of this car is insane it it feels like you are literally the king of the world driving around in absolute pure luxury and opulence i i, I said to him the other day when we were talking about it that it felt a lot like um it felt a lot like uh you know robber baron vibes mm -hmm. driving past the pores pushing their shopping carts doing their groceries yeah um you feel important and it makes you feel important and i think that that is almost as important as how ugly it is. Yeah, one other thing though that I wanna say, cause BMW and the S-Class is the same way as well, but this car, as weird and large as it is, it flies under the radar. No one knows how insane of a car You're this totally is. totally right, yeah. Just from looking at the exterior. No one. It's the interior where this car really shines. Yeah. Well, luckily, when you sort of start to move down the side, I think that the design starts to improve. As you come into yeah. profile, especially, there's some of the, what the Germans love the word typical. There's the typical BMW design language around the side with like the Hofmeister kink, yeah. uh, which is still kind of there, even though it's just a little piece of black plastic now. Yeah. Uh, it's not actually glass anymore. Um, yeah. But the back, I think we both like the back. Yeah, right? the rear's like good. The oh, one other thing before we go to the back, though. The headlights uh, have Swarovski crystals in them. Which oh, is, which is very cool. Yeah, yes. which is super cool. And they are also amazing. They work really well. That's uh, the, like, baller bright. shit that I expected. Yeah, you know, yeah. 160 or whatever this thing yeah. is. Like, I want dumb stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, we go into the rear. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, the turn signals and the... Yeah, mirror. those are they're BM, very BMW looking mirrors. Uh, yeah. The doors we'll get to more in a little bit. Yeah, um, we're probably gonna spend a lot of time on those. But I, I really do like the back. Yeah, um, even like the angles on the back, I think are good. 
Well, and that's kind of what we, where we landed with the M2, which obviously shares a lot of the same sort of design where the front end looked terrible, but the rear the actually made sense. The further back you go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the better it gets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like they ran out of ugly pens as they got further back. Yeah, or it's like one team designed this part and then a completely separate design yeah, team yeah. designed the they rest of the They have three design teams. They have a front, middle, and rear. So we're going to start the inside on the outside. I said we were going to talk about the doors, so let's talk about the doors. Um, they've been extensively covered by a lot of other people, but just to rehash it, they're fully automatic to a point. It's fully automatic with an asterisk. There's a little button right here that I can push to open the door and it's got a proximity sensor, sort of. It'll stop, but um, it moves just hard enough that you might be worried about scratching something. And then you can treat them like normal doors. There's a button inside that you can use to just close the door and it applies to all of the opening surfaces on the car. The trunk is fully powered as well. Um, I just, I don't, I don't see the point to be completely honest. All right. Oh. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. All right, all right, Please. all right, all right. Please fine. go ahead. Let's start. All right, okay. Well, then let's start with the driver's seat. Um, this is iDrive Eight, which you and I have obviously used extensively. Yep. Um, we have our loves and our hates about it. Yeah. What do you I like about it? And then I'll say, uh, you know, what. Do my biggest thing is the screen is super responsive. Yeah. Uh, Apple CarPlay wirelessly connects almost immediately when the car starts. There's no delay. Really. Yeah, and Android Auto is really fast too. Yeah, you've tested that. I obviously am superior because I have an iPhone. Um, okay. And so I like that. Super responsive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah the, from there. Eh. Though, I, okay, yeah. I'll start by saying something nice. The center screen is extremely, con extremely configurable. Yeah. Um, there are tons of different menus and screens that you can dive into for the center gauge screen. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a map and a G meter and all of your driver assistance stuff. Um, which we'll get into more in the driving impressions. Um, I don't love how minimal the uh, stock controls are here, mm -hmm. uh, especially like the other day when I was showing you how to use the assist plus function. Yeah. It's the setting cruise control and stuff is really weird. There's no physical button to set your follow distance. Yeah. So what I do is, I do, the, do, is I do the hey da, 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 da yeah. function with the voice control and then I told it to adjust. Yeah. I don't even know how to get into the menu to adjust it. Yeah. Now, know. From there, it's all kind of downhill. I don't love the climate menu. Um, if you, the, it's just the wall of buttons. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else, you kind of set once and forget. And I guess you can also make that argument of the climate control. So yep. kind of a mixed bag there. Um, what I do really like though is these little. Uh, I love the like radiators because it's not mm -hmm. actually vents now. It's like it's like a, it's like an apartment building in here. Yeah. In, in terms of space and usability of the mm -hmm. climate controls. So that's kind of nice. Um, I like the Swarovski crystal here on the little stack. Mm -hmm. um, the sound system we both like. Yeah, I think it's a solid sound system. I think there's better ones out there. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I think the Mark Levinson sound system is still better, which is found in the Lexus models. Um, not that this is a bad sound system. I no, I think it's great. But that also is because the Mark Levinson sound system is probably the best sound system that you and I have both experienced? Short of the Bentley one, which you yeah. haven't unfortunately yeah, had haven't. get at us. Uh, Bentley. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just, there. Uh, the other thing that I really like about this is that there are, I can, right now, let's count how many different materials there are. There's gray leather, mm -hmm. There's one. carbon fiber. There's carbon fiber, two. There's this, uh, the, well, this spec specifically has the BMW the, individual. Yeah, has the fabric. I don't really know what it is. I think it's wool cashmere. Yeah, it's very, very nice. And very it's actually, nice. one just quick thing on that. I'm stoked to see that they offer different materials that are not just like all leather, everything. Exactly. Leather is a great material, but it is refreshing to so see something three. else different. Okay, yeah. leather. So there's the cream leather. That's four now. The piano black, whatever this is. Which is terrible because it's piano black. Right. Um, there's uh, what else? Oh, the speaker vents. So that's six now. Yeah, that's metal. That's metal. Oh, seven if we're going to count the Swarovski crystals that are also in the speakers. Oh, which, and then again, there's baller shit. Also, uh, all Yes, Yeah, suede, which is also on the sun visors. That's how yeah. you know you've spent the money on the cars. When yeah. When your sun visors aren't plastic, you're really doing all right for yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's seven, right? Six or seven? That's seven. Seven for seven, seven series, baby. Hey, uh, there we go. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Um, yeah, I really like it. 
up here, I there's so much adjustability in all of the seats. Mm -hmm. The massage function works pretty well. And I, it's actually really good. I would test yeah, it last night. Yeah, the intensity night. is great. It's pretty, it, on, I had to turn it off after a while because it was a little too intense, which is not something that I you, expected. You saw God <laughs> yeah. in the driver's seat yeah. of the BMW exactly. 7 Series. Yeah. Um, I think it's really great. I like that the sound system, just to circle back to that very, very briefly, mm -hmm. has got subs in the seats. Yeah. I think that's kind of, that's just gimmicky enough to be cool. One other cool thing, and I don't know if you knew this, but so obviously a big thing with all of these like luxury cars is all the lighting. So we have this huge light bar here that sort of lights up around. I'm not sure how well you can see it right now. I'll throw in some footage of it, but it changes colors obviously. And Mercedes has their own lighting system that we've tested. But speaking of sound, these speakers all also have lights in them. Yeah, I and saw that. And when you mute the speakers, it turns the lights off on the speakers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I noticed I that, that earlier I when I was that. messing yeah. around with it. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of two different ways yeah. that you know that you're muted. I also yeah. like the um, uh, the way that they have done the shortcuts for things. So like uh, at each control surface, as annoying as it is that all of them are haptic, I still think that they should be buttons. But as annoying yeah. as all of that is, there's this little sort of lined motif to a different control so for example there's the seat control and it has these lined motifs on it right mm -hmm. and then if you hit that it then brings up your seat controls yeah. in the infotainment screen and for example if you want to change something about the lights because it's annoying you you hit that button and it does the same thing and if yeah. you want to change something about the drive modes same thing that yeah. is really great because yeah. you kind of are able to like circumnavigate a lot of the clumsiness of everything being in a touch screen yeah and i think like at first glance like if you were to just step in this car you would be super daunted by like just eye drop eight and how many you know different menu settings there are but once you get used to the car and notice like you just said there's all these different shortcuts you don't really have to go through the menus all that much it actually makes this interior a lot more functional and usable yeah uh, well, with that in mind, let's maybe go sit in back. Let's get in the best part of the car, yeah, that's the back seat. The reason you buy it, yeah. All right, as you can tell, we are now in the best part of the 760i, the back seats. Because obviously, if you are in the back seats, you're probably some sort of oil tycoon or something. Yeah, you're on and your way to bust some unions. Exactly. And uh, there's a lot to talk about back here. We're probably not going to cover everything. If you have any questions, please comment down below and we'll do our best to answer all of your questions. But yeah, there's like 18 different screens. We have a 31 inch uh, fold down TV, which you can actually connect your laptop to, yes. as you found out. Yeah, that's um, super great. Um, that's got HDMI port on the back, mm -hmm. so you can hook pretty much anything that will go through the display. But we also found some stuff that like wouldn't hook up to it right away. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Nintendo Switch, we tried to hook up to it. That needs an external power source A and B. It didn't work anyways. Yeah. Um, we tried to do my phone so that we could just like play you guys a clip of something that won't get us copyrighted. Mm -hmm. uh, and that didn't work either. So you're a little limited. The other thing to note with that, I think, is just that like we found there was a ton of input lag. Yeah. So if you're like displaying, like I had my laptop in my lap and the screen down and we were trying to cut the footage together and like it just did not want to keep the mouse movements up. Yeah. And it was, re I, I like was really struggling to move the display, but there's obviously a lot of leg room. Yeah. I mean, Chase is fully reclined. I can't because I'm a peasant and I'm in the... Even when you're sitting behind me or someone taller, you yeah. still have so much room in that seat. Yeah. There's a ton of leg room. I mean, they sacrificed a lot of cargo space to obviously add a ton of leg room here in the back. Uh, but yeah, it's obviously all the same materials that you guys saw up front continue back here. We also have pillows, which you don't have up front. And they're, and I like that they're the fabric instead of leather. Yeah. 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 Or like some sort of weird suede. They actually should hold up a lot better over time because of that. There's also a ton of connectivity. So if we open up this, there's a couple of USB-C ports in here. There's also a wireless charger right here. We have a couple of vents as well. These seats are both heated and cooled. That's also true of the front, which we didn't mention. Yeah, we didn't yeah. mention that. Um, yeah. All the seats, except for this kind of middle seat, are, are all heated. and. Cooled. Yeah, this is a middle seat. You can yeah. fold this up. There is a seat belt here. So if you have to put your mistress or something in here with your friends, you mm -hmm. can. Yeah, the only thing to note there is the transmission tunnel is absolutely ginormous. Yeah, it's not super comfy. Yeah, so preferably it would be like a small child. This, is a, four, this is a four-seater. Really. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Really Yeah, and so is the S-Class. When you have like the package, the executive package or whatever it's they call it, yeah. it's a four-seater. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, heated and cool seats, obviously in the massage function, just like you saw up front. And yeah, it's pretty sweet back here. Yeah, there's also if you um, 
if you don't get the theater screen, there's some little plug things here that you can like mount um, like a tablet on so that mm -hmm. you can entertain your various bastard children. Yeah. Um, or whatever it is rich people do while they are driving around in this. Yep. Um, yeah, which is what all the other competition does as well. They have, yeah. rather, rather than having the one screen, they have two separate screens on either yeah. side. There's also, everything is controlled here on this little touch panel. Uh, we each have one on either side and you mm -hmm. can control various like seat climate settings. Uh, I can even mess with the ambient lighting back here. I can set my seat massage because both of these are massaging. Uh, what else can you do? Oh, climate. Uh, you can also do the media control. So, like, if you're playing music through the car, you can change the song and do. You can change the audio stuff. source yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I do think it's a little bit weird. So, on the Genesis G90, all of the there's a touch screen, but it's not on the door. It's here, um, and that makes sense because the automatic door close button is here, right? Yeah. Yep. But here, it's it's over here it's on on the on door. The, on the door. <laughs> so, like, at that point, what like I would just. C close close the door <laughs> yeah exactly. it doesn't make a ton of sense yeah um there's also obviously blinds you can see that there's blinds behind me um that you can choose to open close and, close. and or open um it's it's very nice uh i oh that i wanted to mention i love the inlay in the sunroof glass yeah i couldn't get a shot of it because it's really well, for one it's daytime um maybe i'll try to get one later and overlay it here but yeah there's actually lights within this moonroof sunroof what whatever they what it? do they call yeah. it yeah i don't know what they call it but yeah there's actually light so when you change the different lighting what, whatever the color you can actually see it here in the i don't know mirror for whatever it is yeah but this is um i think if you're if you're going to buy this car this is where you spend the money 100 percent. you make this as yeah. nice as you can and hire someone to drive you around and that's kind of what sets this and the s class apart from the g90 but we'll talk more about that in our competition segment which is next all right just kidding just before we get to the competition and pricing of this 7 series i just wanted to briefly touch on the cargo space this uh has just over 17 cubic feet of cargo space um Obviously, the cargo space is compromised because of the, you know, larger area in the rear seats to accommodate for some extra legroom. But there's still plenty of room to throw stuff. We have a couple of bags uh, and a, some shopping bags from some shopping that I did yesterday. Uh, there's plenty of space back here. Definitely good enough for a couple of suitcases and, you know, groceries or whatever else you wanted to put back here. And, of course, it has power open and close, which I'll demonstrate for you right now. Well, just the closing function. And then we'll cut to pricing. Now let's talk about how much this car you see in front of you costs. Um, this one runs as tested $162,045. Uh, that's obviously quite a lot of money. Uh, there are an absurd $48,445 worth of options on this car. Uh, the highlights for which are the Driving Assistance Pro package, which gets you uh, the um, level three-ish hands-free uh, self-driving system. It's not actually self-driving, sorry. Um, it means that you can set the adaptive cruise control and not touch the steering wheel. There's also the rear executive lounge seating package, which is $7,250. That's theater screen, reclining seats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's a very, very, very expensive car. Uh, that said, as compared to the Mercedes S-Class, it's actually not that far off, but the Genesis G90 does undercut it by quite a lot. And we're gonna talk about that right now. All right, let's talk about competition. Uh, for this video, we're gonna focus on two competitors, mainly because that's really all that there is at this price point. We have the S-Class and the Genesis G90. So for the S-Class, there's three different trims for the purposes of this, just to make it easier and to be the most comparable to this specific car, I'm gonna use the s580 formatic which has a base msrp of one hundred and twenty four thousand dollars, and it also comes with a uh, twin turbo v8 as well with a mile hybrid system just like this car i built one relatively similar which is pretty much maxed out because this car is almost as insane as you can get from bmw um, and my s class came out to one hundred and sixty five thousand and four hundred dollars with options and delivery again has pretty much the exact same options as this car uh, but just a few thousand dollars more expensive yeah and then there's the g90 now uh for reference i drove a g90 off screen about a year and change ago um that is the 3.3 liter 3.5 uh, 3.5 liter e supercharged mild hybrid v6 so there's two so there's a 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 with 375 horsepower 
And then there's the 3.5 liter twin turbo with the electric supercharger. Which is the top one. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And there's no trims on the G90. It's just based on powertrain. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. It was a year ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, now that is obviously quite a lot cheaper. I think it's also quite a lot better looking. Oh, m most definitely. I think definitely. if we're going to rank these aesthetically, yeah. S-Class, G90, no. 7. No. I'm going G90, G90, S Class, and this. I think that you can get better colors on the S Class, and I give huge preference to color. Oh, yeah, but the S Class has looked the same for like 15 years. <laughs> because it looks good. <laughs> but, but that G90. Why would you mess with it? No. I don't know. I think the G90 is, uh, but whatever. I like the interior on the G90 a lot. I like the interior on the S Class better. I like the interior on yeah. this the best. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you also just have a lot more options with either the S-Class or the 7 Series. The G90 just doesn't go as insane <laughs> with the screens and the reclining seats. It just doesn't do all that. But it's also $60,000 cheaper. Yeah, it is. So the, S, or sorry, the G90 that I built um, with options and delivery was $103,000. And that is the fully maxed out version. That's about what mine costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So... I, and I think that for the money, we're going to pause for the uh, A-line to the Denver airport here. Now, I think that um, for the money, the Genesis driving experience is just as close to, if not better than this. I liked how it drove just as much. I think the air suspension in both of these cars yeah. is really comparable. I think that you have to be a real freaking nerd to like really tell the difference. Um, I think this is nicer to ride in the back of. I think it's a little bit more composed in back. Yeah, I was never in the back when I drove the yeah. G90 briefly, but yeah. We've never driven the S-Class either, no. uh, unfortunately. The closest so. we came was the EQS a couple of years ago, but it's not yes, the same. Yes, exactly, and that's where I was going with that. I drove the uh, EQS, which rode phenomenally. Yeah. I didn't like a lot of other things about the EQS. I think that I would take the i7 over the EQS only because it rides better and has a nicer interior. And looks substantially better. The EQS is a heinous looking car. Yeah, it's a really ugly car, but so is this. It's kind of a battle of the bastards. Yeah, I it's really, a race I to really, the bottom. Yeah, I really do not <laughs> like the way that either of those yeah, look. it's true. We're in the early stage for electric cars. Let's let's hope that things get a little bit better aesthetically yeah. Yeah. once they figure out that they don't have to like do much with powertrain and hard point constraints. I'm hoping to see some more yeah. um, fun designs that aren't just eggs for yeah, range. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I think with that in mind, it's time to get in the driver's seat and the back seat and talk about what it's like to be on the road in the 7 Series. All right, let's go again. Hi, everybody. This is uh, now take three because our GoPro keeps dying. Okay, um, let's start with the um, drive mode or the ADAS systems, which uh, both of us have kind of had mixed results with, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, like I've now said for the, for the third time, <laughs> um, you know, the lane departure, lane keep assist system, and the adaptive cruise control work, work really well. They're really, really smooth, especially the um, adaptive cruise control if, you know, a car jumps in front of you on the highway or something, it's not slamming on the brakes. It's super yeah. smooth. And it goes down to zero miles an hour. And it'll actually, even if you come to a stoplight, it will stay there. It'll just keep it on. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, which is super nice, and you'd expect that, especially at this price point. But, um, yeah, it works really, really well. The only problem that I've really had is with the... Uh, level three self-driving or hands-free driving system uh, on the highway. I've just had some situations where it's swerved out of lanes or ping-pong me in between the lane rather than actually keeping me in, you know, like in the middle. Uh, but other than that, I mean, all the assists work just as you would expect. Yeah, and I, I had the same issues. Um, you know, I've had to catch it a few times, but I also had a really great experience with it when I was coming home from a friend's house. You know, I was able to drive uh, highway exit to highway exit for about 25 or 30 minutes without having to touch the wheel. I set it, forgot about it, and just monitored. Um, you know, and that said, human beings are not super awesome at monitoring. You know, I, I don't know that this is ne necessarily the place to have the full self-driving discussion, but, um, you know, you definitely do have to pay attention. Otherwise, you know, you end up ping-ponging into a lane that's occupied by someone or an obstacle. Um, I've had it fail to recognize obstacles before, like fallen traffic cones, um, you know, and you don't want to run that over in your $160,000 BMW. But, I mean, from the front seat, the rest of the driving experience definitely redeems that. I think that the G90 is a little bit easier to live with just because there are more physical hard buttons for things and it is so much easier to um, 
live with the G90 from an interface standpoint. I think that they drive about the same. 99.99% of people aren't really going to notice the difference. Um, but, I mean, how is it in back? Yeah, I mean, in the back, it's super comfortable. I mean, bumps are practically non-existent. I mean, it's a super, super smooth driving, and obviously being a passenger in this thing is, you know, a pure pleasure. That's why you, know. you buy it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially this spec specifically, that's exactly why you're buying this car, and it, it definitely delivers on all the luxuries, and even more, you know, with the screen and the massaging seats and all that. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible back here. Yeah, I think that without the screen, the argument for the G90 is a lot lot stronger and the s-class for that matter because you don't have to or because you don't have the screen um they're closer and so that's definitely like something to keep in mind yeah um the reason that you get this is the theater screen i think that the next logical step for that is you know for there to for there to just be a computer yeah um there needs there needs to just be a computer in here instead of just a screen with an hdmi port it's nice that there's an hdmi port but. yeah but you know like we kind of touched on in the interior part there's no well there is an hdmi port the only thing that you can really plug into it is a computer because there's no like other power you know there's not like a household plug back here where you could plug something like yeah. a gaming it's console it's very obvious that the intended use is you know just watch netflix in the back yeah oh definitely yeah oh. just relaxing and watching you know netflix or maybe i'm sure you you could like airplay something to the screen um you know or you know cast something up there exactly so, yeah. the one thing i do want to complain about at least from a driving dynamics point of view is um you know the pe the brake pedal feel is just a little uneven it's kind of we're slowing down to a light right now and i'm having to really pay attention to how much i modulate the ride to kind of like keep things smooth for my boss in back uh, I don't I don't want to be you know thrown out on the curb and it's very difficult to kind of get that pedal to a point where it breaks evenly and so the nose kind of dives and then you feel the air suspension trying to like catch up I think it's a little weird yeah I don't know if you noticed that at all obviously the steering is completely devoid of any sort of real feeling you can't tell where the wheels are but oh yeah. you have enough cameras in here that it doesn't matter yeah absolutely <laughs> I didn't really notice any issues with the braking I did notice that it was it was like nothing, 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 and then it feels like it's, yeah, you know, all that's the exactly breaks. What, yeah, that's you know? exactly what I mean. Um, but, I mean, I got used to it after a little bit. I thought it was fine. It's a little jarring at first, but I think if you got yeah. used to it and you're driving this, especially if you're someone's driver, I think you would eventually just, you know, understand how this car, you know, handles and, yeah. you know, what the brake feels like. I think, and then just... The, really the last thing I want to touch on is the boost function. I think that it is hilarious. <laughs> I have said time and again, if you can make me laugh while driving whatever your car is, like you win the battle, if not the war. Like having a boost button is fantastic. I yeah. love that feature. I think it's so dumb. Um, so what it does is if you pull and hold the left paddle, which is labeled boost, uh, the, the bunch of the M graphics come up on the steering wheel and the bolsters suck in and squeeze you tight. And then the electric motor, uh, which is 18 ish horsepower or something like that. And 148 foot pounds of torque dumps all of that to a maximum output acceleration run. And it's super fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, like you get a bunch more noise piped in. It's, it's even apparently fun from the back. You said you scared the hell out of your mom with yeah, it the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I drove my mom around <laughs> in it and she was screaming and freaking out in the back. Yeah, I laughed. I, it's super fun and you really, because of the power, do not have to work that hard in traffic. Uh, this, this whole car embodies the, the, you know, minimum input, maximum output that like all luxury cars should have. Yeah. Um, and I think with that, I'm, I'm out of talking points. Did you have anything you want to hit before we get to the conclusion? No. Let's wrap it up. It's a conclusion. Uh -huh. Let's conclude. What do you think? <sighs> uh, I really like it. Obviously, the ride quality is absolutely unbelievable. Bumps are practically non-existent. Um, the design is so-so, like we mentioned earlier. But overall, I like it. For $162,000, it's really hard for me to justify like that I would personally own one of these, but if you're in the market for one, it is certainly a compelling option in comparison to the G90 and the S-Class. I think that's a great point. Um, I also want to just point out how great the like crystal DRLs look yeah. right now, yeah. now that the sun is starting to go down. 
Um, other than that, obviously, I, th I think it's a heinous looking car. I just, I think it's really, really stupid and ugly looking. Um, I'm hoping that they'll start to change that design language. But I think that the move here is if you're going to be driven in a luxury car, you either buy the 7 Series or the S-Class. For sure. And you get, the, you get the seats, you get the theater, you throw the PS5 in the back. Yep. Well, there's no 12 volts, so you can't actually power a PS5 off the back. You'd have to run some crazy adapter nonsense, which may or may not be yeah. safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. <laughs> so probably. bear that in mind if you want to play Fortnite in your 7 Series. Um, but I think that if you're going to be driven, those two are the move. I think that if you're just going to buy one of these to use as a car, you buy the G90 because it's like twenty thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, even from the base. base. Yeah, yeah. From the so base I mean, like one, yeah. you, you know, that's a down payment on your summer home in Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, like, easily. You can bust so many unions for like <laughs> forty thousand yeah. dollars. Like, you can yeah. you can have people peeing in cups in warehouses. You can have baristas making you drinks for. Yeah not a living wage you can you can influence geopolitical circumstances for the difference between the 7 series and the G90 so the maxed out G90 not the maxed out G90 <laughs> yeah. right so yeah. i mean i think that's kind of a good place to live. I don't have anything else. I don't either. Do you have anything else? No. Great. So that's kind of what we thought of it. Um, it's a cool car. It's really ugly. There's also a lot to love, like a lot of BMW right now. This is kind of a mixed bag, but what isn't a mixed bag is our YouTube numbers. We really, really need you guys to hit that bell, hit that the, 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 hit that subscribe button, and uh, please keep watching me and Joby Fumble Takes. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye.